thing I want to do first is I want to tile the data set new. The data is already in tiles, but these tiles are rather big, more than 20 million points. So I want to use smaller tiles. The other thing I want to do, I want to add buffers to every tile. Why do I want to use buffers? Because as it says here on Martin's blog, use buffers when processing LIDAR and tiles, and it has three exclamation marks. Now, I don't use three exclamation marks that often. But when I do, it's really important. So, what does it mean to have buffers? Uh, I don't know, is Christmas cookie a baking, a big thing here in Brazil? But you know the concept. Well, in Germany, it's a big thing. But when I was little, every year we would bake Christmas cookies. And what you know when you bake Christmas cookies is if you make a cookie, you need to have a buffer. Because if I try to take this cookie directly from the border and sort of optimize the dough, or use every part of it, then the side of the cookie will not be so nice. It will be full of little artifacts and crumbled. And in LiDAR processing, it's no different than baking Christmas cookies. I mean, that's an analogy, and now I'll show you a bit more. So you see, you see a tiling here. What you, what you see here is a tiling in the back. And then you see uh, points. And these points are triangulated. You see this triangulation here. Now, if I operate without buffers, then I only use the points from inside the tile, like on this side here. And if I make a DTM using only the ground points, for example, for this tile here, then I only use ground points from inside the tile. What will happen is that the boundary of the triangulation is also inside the tile. And what happens along the boundary of the tile? You get very long and skinny triangles because there is no point on the other side. And when that happens, you get very poor interpolations that are different than in the middle where all the triangles are nice and round and big. I don't have any long and skinny triangles here, only here. Furthermore, it's very unlikely that every corner has a ground point, because ground point is a subset of the points. If I don't have a ground point exactly in the corner, I will have a few pixels that are not covered by the tin. Hence, I get these kind of crumbles. I get empty pixels, and because of the skinny triangles, I get long uh, interpolation stretches that give me weird looking elevations that are not the same as the elevations on the other side for this tile when I do the same thing here. And that creates so-called edge architects, and they have to be avoided as, at all costs, which I try to express with the three exclamation marks. Looking on the other side, here we use a buffer. What do I mean with a buffer? Well, I'm just making the number of points I'm using a little bit bigger than the tile itself. So I'm using points from the neighboring tiles to create, in this case, the tin. Now, of course, again, here somewhere, I will have long and skinny triangles, but these are now outside my target area. These are like the dough that is left over that I then, this case, if I now look at the edge of the tile, the triangles covering the edge look just the same as the triangles in the inside. And here they always look different. And that is an artifact of cutting here. But if I just ex move the cut over a little bit, by maybe 50 meters, then I don't do this. I do it here, but I don't use that part. And now I nicely cover all the corners, and I don't get 50 pixels. And also the triangles I'm interpolating here look exactly like the triangles in the middle. And because I do that on the both tiles, the elevations will be the same, and I have a nice, seamless. Let's go back to the bit folder and look for the tool called Last Tile. As input, we will take our raw data from 2013. There are already tiles. We will now retile the tiles into smaller tiles, adding them all. 
this styling that was there originally, I don't know why, but it's 50 meter shift, uh, but that's okay. So now we will create a tiling that is that has a tile size of 500 meters. So the tile size is 500 meters. And if I do that, that tiling in green is now a 500 meter tiling. What I also want to do, I want to give every tile a buffer. If I have buildings or larger structures in there, I need a bigger buffer. But here I just have trees. So a buffer of 25 meters should be sufficient. And if you do that, you already see the buffer here in the preview. Now there are a few other things I would like to do. Well, first of all, again, here it says files of flight lines. Usually when I start tiling, I still have the original flight line. I don't retile tiles all the time. That's why the default is set to flight lines, but these are not flight lines, these are tiles. There are some other things I would like to do. Well, first, let's not forget to give it a new output directory. Browse for the output directory, which again I've created for you. So now this directory points to the... They are all going to get new names now. And if I don't do anything, the name will be tile underscore underscore with the lower left coordinate. And I always tell people, because it's very, you know, well, just call them tile. That's okay when you do one LIDAR project, but often people will do LIDAR project after LIDAR project. And you know, next year you find on your desktop something called tile something. You have no idea what that tile is because it's called tile something. A simple acronym, WKS, WM. Now we have the chance to also make sure all our tiles have the correct geo reference. So we can add this right now. Then from now on, we never have to add it again by hand like we had to do it in the past. So we can use this rollout that we never used. Instead of UTM, we use EPSG code. Of course, we probably won't have this EPSG code in here until unless somebody requested it. No. But we'll just pick any one and then change the number to the right one. Just let's not forget to write down that number uh, in the command line. And then we get the right, assuming it is a prediction. Yeah, I'm just setting it now. Okay, run. So let's have a look at the command line. So we last tiling all these input tiles. We give it this output name. Tile size, buffer size. Or, sorry, I need to zoom in. That's what we should get. Tile size 500, buffer 25. This is the output directory. And now I want to fix the PSG code. So EPSG codes, if you don't know what they may be specify a projection. And the next tool will be last noise. Because there was some noise, some isolated points, and we want to remove them. The tool should open that's called last noise removes or flags isolated or noise points in light up. And now we load in all these new tiles. Brazil, 2013. And from now on, we always work with the result of the previous processing step to become the next thing. So, tiles, here are all our tiles. And now, now you really want to use a wildcard, because otherwise you split yourself. And here you see our tiles. And yes, we have some smaller ones here the edge, but that's okay. And you also see the buffer. We have the overlap now between the tiles. Those are the buffers. Let's have a look at, uh, by using the arrow keys, I can now walk up and down. And you see here the number of points in every tile. Look. We did add the correct geo reference. Now we don't have to type minus UTM 23,000 anymore. So let's remove noise. Well, let's try to pick a tile that has noise. Uh, we can uh, look for one by looking at the coordinates, the Z coordinates, the usually indicator. Before I run it on all tiles, I like to test what I'm my setting on just one tile. Oh, this one. This one definitely has noise because we have the one minus 486 meters. 
So we, we now just process one file, selected file only, to test if we have good parameters for the noise removal. The tiles are still classified. So if I look at only this file, view, it is still has the old classification, and the old classification already has noise. You see that? Um, so what I want to do now, actually I'm right now not sure if my last noise will, will set everything else to zero except the noise. So we can add a transform that will make sure it's all zero. And to make sure I really get rid of them, I can just have a command, set classification to zero. You can just add to the input as a transform. And now there are some default parameters, and I'll just we'll run with those. Except for the output, I already want to get my output in the right directory. So I created this directory for you. It's called tiles noise, use current. Okay, so on the selected file only, I will now use these parameters to remove the noise. And I'll explain to you in a second what that means. I press the run button, and I review my command line, last noise. This particular file I can test now. I set the classification to zero. These are the default parameters that I haven't explained yet and the output directory. This should be quite fast because it's a small tile. Maybe let's look at the results. Uh, don't close this tool, let this tool open, and uh, just open last view to look at the results. Last view. And there should be now one, one file in this directory, 2013, tiles, noise, Oh, yeah, definitely uh, the, and there are some noise points now. But only look at the noise points. These are the noise points I'm getting. And I maybe I make my boxes bigger in vertical direction. If I make them bigger, then it's less likely that points are isolated because the boxes are bigger and the, the count in the boxes will increase. That also can, of course, mean that the clusters of noise we've seen will also increase. They may not become noise anymore. That noise that we saw down there was actually easy to fix because it's a noise that's very obviously a noise. It's minus, which we also can eliminate another way. Let's increase the step size to two meters and run it again. And that's basically how you figure out what is a good way for your particular application. I would decide those points that are really low, I would not even attempt to remove through that noise function. I would just cut them. Because they are so obvious noise that I don't need to model my noise function to capture those. I can just remove them by a very simple filter, which I add here as well. Filter by coordinates. Drop all coordinates whose z is below. Well, we, we like in an area 600 meters and up. Let's say 500. You know, these big clusters is by the as minus 400. Every Z value that's lower than 500 is now being dropped. And being dropped meaning it's removed from the file, not marked as noise. Now you may be tempted to say, oh, let's remove the noise too. But if you remove the noise, you don't see anymore what was classified as noise. I always think it's better to leave the noise in the file. So, now I run again. Because now I have this filter. This filter is available in all tools. You can do that almost at any stage. We could have done that at when we did the last hive already. It would have probably been a good idea. Um, now the main difference is we have now two, and we will overwrite the last file. So make sure we have exited the viewer.
there I can. Uh, the bounding box was not fixed because loud noise does not fix the bounding box. In retrospect, what I would have done differently had I thought about it a bit more, I would have dropped earlier. I would have figured out during the timing step, what's the lowest point that makes sense based on my light area? And I would have put drop set below into the last tile command. That could be a bird, it could be a, a twig. And now I run it on all the tiles. So I go back to last noise to process all files. I'm running it, I'm running it on all cores now. I press run, and I'll have the same thing now. But instead of doing it on only one file, I'll do it on all the tiles. Start. Also for last noise, it's already important that you have buffers.